Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 6th of November. Two terrorists neutralized in encounter in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Indian Army Chief meets Nepal's Prime Minister in Kathmandu to boost ties. And Bangladesh signs deal with India for 30 million doses of COVID-19 vaccine. And now for all the details. India recorded 47,638 new cases of novel coronavirus, taking its total to 8.41 million on Friday. That's rose by 670 in the last 24 hours, taking total mortalities to 124,985. With rising COVID-19 cases and air pollution level, Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal has announced a ban on firecrackers in the national capital ahead of Diwali, the festival of lights. The New Delhi government on Thursday imposed a complete ban on the use and sale of firecrackers in the Indian capital ahead of the Hindu festival of Diwali and ramped up critical health infrastructure in state-run hospitals to control coronavirus cases that they say has surged due to pollution and the festive season. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal banned the use of firecrackers from November 7 to 30 in a bid to control the air pollution that has hobbled the city of over 20 million people. The air quality in Delhi remained in the very poor category on Friday. Each year, smoke from festival firecrackers significantly adds to the pollution levels in Delhi and its satellite cities, resulting in a haze that usually lingers for days as wind speeds drop during winters. Arranging coronavirus epidemic has also heightened alarm over the health hazard posed by the choking smog with doctors warning of a sharp increase in respiratory illnesses. Meanwhile, India recorded 47,638 new cases of the novel coronavirus, taking its total to 8.41 million on Friday. Deaths rose by 670 in the last 24 hours, taking total mortalities to 124,985. Security forces on Friday neutralized two terrorists in an encounter in Pampo town of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir. Police said one other terrorist surrendered during the operations, which were still underway till the last reports came in. Two terrorists was neutralized by security forces in a gunfight on Friday in Pampo town of India's Union territory of Jammu and Kashmir. The security forces had launched an operation in Lalpura area of Pampur on Thursday evening after terrorists opened fire on civilians. They halted the operation for the night and resumed it on Friday morning. The Kashmir Zone Police, while confirming the killing of two terrorists on Twitter, informed that one other terrorist also surrendered during the operations, which were still underway till the last reports came in. This comes just few days after security forces gunned down a top commander of Pakistan-based Hijbul Mujahideen terror group, during an encounter in Srinagar city of Jammu and Kashmir last Sunday. India accuses Pakistan of aiding terrorists to infiltrate across the border and spread unrest in Kashmir Valley. Pakistan, however, denies the charges. In news from Nepal, Indian Army Chief General Manoj Mukhur Naravne on Friday called on Nepal's Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli in Kathmandu before wrapping up his three-day official visit to the Himalayan nation. His visit largely aimed at resetting the bilateral ties that came under strain following a bitter boundary dispute earlier this year. 
Indian Army Chief General Manoj Mukund Narawne on Friday called on Nepal's Prime Minister KP Sharma Oli in Kathmandu before wrapping up his 3-day official visit to the Himalayan nation aiming to reset ties a year after a bitter border row strained relations during the meeting pm oli who also holds the defense portfolio said that nepal and india have long standing special relationship and that issues between the two countries would be resolved through dialogue on thursday naravne was also conferred the honorary rank of general of the nepali army by nepal's president vidya devi bhandari at an investiture ceremony During his visit General Naravne attended several events of the Nepal Army and also handed over ambulances and medical equipment for two field hospitals to the Nepal Army Moving on as electioneering has picked up pace for the upcoming polls in Gilgit Baltistan political parties have kick started their campaign in the illegally occupied region Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz Vice President Maryam Nawaz took a jab at Pakistan's prime minister Imran Khan calling him a fake prime minister who does not realize how people are struggling due to inflation The people across Gilgit Baltistan are up in arms against Pakistan's decision of integrating the illegally occupied region with the rest of Pakistan In the run up to the assembly elections in the region scheduled to be held on November 15 in 24 constituencies Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan recently announced that the region will become a provisional province of Pakistan. This has drawn massive condemnation. As electioneering has picked up pace for the upcoming polls, PML and Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz Vice President Maryam Nawaz kick-started her seven-day campaign on Thursday. Addressing a public rally in Skardu, she took a jibe at Khan and said that the fake prime minister does not realize how people are struggling due to inflation. She urged the people in Gilgit Baltistan not to vote for leaders who change their loyalties. The PPP Pakistan People's Party chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari has alleged that the election commissioner of Gilgit Baltistan is facilitating the prime minister and federal ministers in violating elections laws meanwhile as verbal duel and mutual recrimination intensified in the midst of electioneering federal information minister and premier imran's top political aide shibli faraz took a jibe at the two main opposition parties pmln and ppp He went on to add that the two parties which have been rejected by the people of Pakistan could not hunt wink the people of Gilgit Baltistan. In news from Afghanistan, Afghan Army Chief General Yasin Zia on Thursday said that Afghan forces have cleared two districts in Kandahar province of the Taliban. He also claimed more al-Qaeda members have been killed in operations in the Taliban influenced area in Farah. indicating Taliban still has close coordination with other terrorist groups Afghan Army Chief General Yasin Zia on Thursday said that the Afghan security forces have cleared Kandahar's Zerai and Panjwai districts of the Taliban Zia also informed that more al-Qaeda members have been killed in operations by Afghan forces in a Taliban influenced area in Farah province in the last few days while blaming the Taliban still has close coordination with other terrorist groups the development comes amid soaring violence across the country and efforts by Taliban and Afghan government negotiators to kick start direct peace talks in Doha meanwhile Afghanistan's first vice president Amrullah Saleh on Thursday once again stressed that there is strong evidence of Taliban's involvement in the Kabul university attack and a probe is underway despite militant group islamic state claiming responsibility the taliban has however condemned the attack which killed over 30 people who were mostly students and rejected saleh's claims saying the first vice president is maligning the group moving on to news from bangladesh bangladesh signed a deal with the serum institute of india on thursday to buy 30 million doses of a potential corona virus vaccine being developed by british drug maker astrazeneca bangladesh on thursday has signed a tripartite agreement with the serum institute of india and vaximco pharmaceuticals limited a pharmaceutical company in bangladesh for coronavirus vaccine developed by oxford 
हेल्थ मिनिस्टर ऑफ बांग्लादेश जाहिद मलिक एंड हाई कमिश्नर ऑफ इंडिया टू बांग्लादेश विक्रम दोराई स्वामी वर प्रेजेंट ऑन द ओकेजन अलोंग विद अदर सीनियर ऑफिशियल्स ऑफ द हेल्थ मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ बांग्लादेश एंड द टू कंपनीज एस्ट्राजेनेकाज एक्सपेरिमेंटल कोविड 19 वैक्सीन इज सीन एज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट एडवांस्ड कैंडिडेट्स इन द रेस अगेंस्ट द नोवल कोरोना वायरस सेरम इंस्टीट्यूट वुड प्रोवाइड द वैक्सीन एट अ प्राइस सिमिलर टू दैट व्हिच इंडिया पेस रिपोर्ट सजेस्ट दैट कॉस्ट कुड बी 4 डॉलर टू 5 डॉलर पर डोज so this is a very good day for india bangladesh ties it's a very good uh, day for the agenda that our prime minister put forward in march this year when he told other sarc leaders that this is a battle we must fight together and it is a battle we must win together bangladesh was in talks with development partners including world bank and the asian development bank to secure funds for the vaccine government officials said experts fear bangladesh might face another surge in infections during the winter having so far confirmed 416,006 cases including 6,021 deaths the serum institute the world's largest manufacturer of vaccine by volume has partnered with astrazeneca the gates foundation and the gavi vaccine alliance to produce more than a billion doses of covid-19 vaccine for global supply Indian Navy warship INS Shakti replenished American and Japanese warships during the ongoing Malabar 2020 maritime exercise in the Bay of Bengal. The participants of the exercise are engaging to enhance safety and security in the maritime domain. Seeing COVID-19 pandemic, the exercise this year has been planned on the non-contact at sea format. Indian Navy warship INS Shakti replenished American and Japanese warships during the ongoing joint naval exercise in the Bay of Bengal on Thursday. India, the United States, Japan and Australia began their largest joint naval exercises in over a decade on Tuesday, seen as part of efforts to balance China's vast military and economic power in the region. The annual Malabar war games that India holds with the United States and Japan have been expanded to include Australia this year to cover all members of the court and informal group of the four largest democracies in the Indo-Pacific. The exercises come at a time when the host India is locked in a military standoff on the land border with China. India has a logistics support agreement with all the three other participants of the war games including America, Japan and Australia. Artists in Srinagar city of India's Jammu and Kashmir enthralled audiences with their performances of traditional folk theater Band Patthar amid the COVID-19 pandemic. The event aimed to revive the dying art of folk theater and make people aware of its importance. Artists in Srinagar city, the summer capital of India's Jammu and Kashmir territory this week enthralled the audience with their performances of traditional folk theater Band Patthar amid the coronavirus pandemic. Artists dressed in colorful clothes danced to the tunes of traditional folk music, telling a tale of Kashmiris and their tribulations in a bid to revive the dying art of folk theater and make people aware of its importance. आज जो है कि कोविड की वजह से आज काफ़ी अरसे के बाद ये शो नए से स्टार्ट हुआ है तो आज हमारा बस यही मकसद है क्या जो आने वाली नई जनरेशन है वो प्रमोट हो जाए वो आगे आ जाए वो अपने कल्चर को जाने ताकि उन्हें पता चले कि हमारा कश्मीर का कल्चर कैसा था और हमारा कल्चर जो है वो जिंदा रहे बाकी इन यस्टर ईयर्स बांट पत्थर वॉज यूज एज अ मीडियम टू इन्फॉर्म द कॉमनर्स अबाउट कंटेम्प्रेरी रिलीजियस सोशल एंड पोलिटिकल इशूज थ्रू प्रिवेलेंट स्टोरीज With technological advancements in the field of media and deteriorating security situation, the art form lost its relevance and audience. But efforts are underway to revive it. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com/AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition we will see you same time next week have a great weekend good night Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button